this city becomes huge. That's how internationally renowned visual artist David Shrigley described this city when he heard it was to become a city of culture. And now, eight months into 2013, Shrigley's words were never more true. Welcome to Derry London Derry, UK City of Culture 2013. Welcome to the show. From whatever direction you approach this city, if there's one building that dominates the skyline, it's this one. St. Columns Cathedral, the Muller Church of the Church of Ireland in the Diocese of Derry. Steeped in history, this daily functioning Protestant cathedral is now recognised the world over for its ecumenical and bridge building activities. More on its amazing history later. Coming up on the show today. We host the biggest traditional Irish music festival ever. We wave in celebration of our 400 year old walls. We dance to break yet another world record. And we look at the impact of conflicts. 400 years ago, in 1613, King James I decreed by royal charter the new county of Londonderry and that the Honourable the Irish Society be established to build a city in this county and within this city a cathedral. Immediately, a silver gilt chalice and patent were sent from London by way of a promise for the church they hoped to build and true to that promise, in 1633, this magnificent cathedral was completed. Not only was it the first Anglican church to be built after the Reformation in the British Isles, it was the first Protestant cathedral to be built in Europe. And what of that silver gilt promise chalice? Well, more on that later. The month of August saw the city packed with cultural activities, including Flag Hill and the Heron, which without question was by far the biggest cultural event so far this year. Hailed as the most successful FLA ever, this was the first time the traditional music festival was held north of the border. An estimated 500,000 people visited the city over the week-long event. FLA Live broadcast on our main network, MHZ Worldview. Went down a storm with millions of viewers tuning in. We continue now to feed that first for things Irish traditional, with this report from Shane McCall who is right in the thick of it. This is the biggest gathering of Irish traditional music, dance and song in the world. And for the first time ever, Fla Coyne the Heron has come to Derry. The atmosphere is electric. It's like this small city has been waiting for generations for this time to come. And finally, it's arrived. I just love everything like this. I love Irish music, so it's, it's, and just everybody around. Everybody's just brilliant. They're all nice, and everybody's happy, and I love it. It's, it's so good. <laughs> Mighty, great weather, great people, very friendly, and uh, great music. Yeah, really, you know, bus people busking, and uh, really good carnival atmosphere. It's great for the city. They have it here and there, especially the city of culture now brilliant buzz around the town. Everybody's loving it from the young to the very old. It's mid-morning and already the streets are bustling with people here at the FLA. I'm in Shipkey Street and all along this side of the street there are shops set up for traditional players to pop in and get their strings fixed or their borons or if they want to come along and buy an instrument straight away, here's the place to do it. Oh, Shane, how are you? Not so bad for you. I say nice. Welcome into the shop. Thank you very much. Into Irish musical instruments and the bar on maker. Ah, you're based here in Chipkey Street for the Fla. For the Fla, number 25. If, I'm, if anybody's watching <laughs> and still here, we're having a great time in Derry. Brilliant. Derry people are very friendly. They are indeed. Very helpful, very accommodating. And you, you make borons? So. We make borons, yeah. What, yeah. What, can you talk me through the process of how they're made? Yep, now what I do is I buy in the rims and the, the skins I use are gold skins. Uh, and uh, nice and smooth, it has to be smooth both sides, not too heavy, 
you want a, a nice deep tone off it. It is a bass drum, deep tone. Um, we take this from, uh, this is a, a taped, taped the outside, but it deepens the tone. It's like a knee ring uh, on a drum. I'm literally copied that off drummers, you know it. Notice that if you taped it, it gives a deeper tone. Thank you very much, oh, Yeah, very Thank you. Thank you. So, Jerry, what do you do here? I am here at the FLA. Um, we have a little um, stall set up here in the, in the old bank. And there's a number of instrument makers like myself who service the musical needs of the traditional music community. I'll just give a little bit of advice, a um, little bit of support where it's needed, so that they can see that um, we're, we're part of this whole music music event that happens. Uh, I'm also a musician playing, we've played on, on various television programs throughout the plan. So it's meeting the community, the musical community, uh, from, from year to year, that's what we do. So if a, if a string breaks, a session player can come in here and get it fixed? Oh, come in, we'll fix, we'll fix our strings and fix their lives sometimes as well. <laughs> All going well. It's a it's a great event. Yeah, and I mean sometimes somebody comes in and broke a string or the bridge falls. They don't know what to do. They, they might have a, a fiddle that's just not really well set up. And if we can fix it here, we'll do it. But we can say we'll meet after the flat. Uh, there's my number. Come down and visit. And we've more instruments. And we we've more time to talk. It's really a showcase. It's like it's like a conference for us all. So it's it's it's, it's very enjoyable as well. It's good fun. An accordion repairer, a tuner, and uh, I bring like a lot of accordions to the flat because you get a lot of people here. It's a once once off chance for them to try out new instruments, and you know they, you can't walk into any town in Ireland where there's an accordion shop or whoever like it's a specialised thing. So we're here to meet anybody that wants to see us. It's been brilliant. You know, just you walk down the street and you see from like a, a very young young kid playing brilliant music to a lot of old people playing and like, together like you know it's, it's fantastic. Without doubt, one of the best festivals to come to our city. Fingers crossed there's talk of it returning in 2016. Stay tuned for more from the FLA at the end of the show. I'm in the porch, the entrance to the cathedral. This is a large mortar shell fired into the city when it was under siege in 1689. It contained a document inserted into this hole offering the citizens terms of surrender which they defiantly refused to accept. In 1613, around the same time as the cathedral was being planned, something equally significant was in the planning, the marking out of the grounds for the city walls. 400 years on, Derry remains the only completely intact walled city in Ireland and it's one of the best examples of a walled city in Europe. On the 25th of August, Derry Walls Day was held to celebrate the marking out of the walls 400 years ago. A day where the city saw living history street performers demonstrating weapons, costumes and livestock of the time with almost 2,000 people linking together hand in hand along the walls to perform a tsunami Mexican wave. But on this occasion the wave was triggered by something quite unique, a full complement of bell ringers right here in the bell tower of St Columns Cathedral.
this is Derry Walls Day 2013, which is the first year in a five-year programme of anniversaries to mark the building of Derry's Walls. The first year, 400 years ago, was about the marking out of the ground on which the walls were to be built. So today's events were really about unpacking the story about the marking out of the walls and the legacy that it's left for us today in our cultural identities. Great occasion today. Uh, it's been a wonderful pageant at Guildhall Square. Uh, wonderful performances all day long on the walls, including this morning the Mexican Wave, which was an excellent opportunity to showcase the walls at their best and also to raise some money for a very worthy charity in Foyle Hospital. My sidearm is the uh, typical Gaelic Irish skiing. Nice tapered to a fine point, so it's very handy for piercing through chainmail. Got a very heavy back on it, which gives it extra force for a downward blow. I feel very proud that so many dairy people took the time today to be part of making a big statement about our walls and that with uh, the enthusiasm by which people came out in their numbers uh, and, and actually stood for so long waiting for successive waves and uh, I mean it, the, the people of Derry are part of the theatre and, and they showed that on the walls today. Congratulations to everyone involved. I can't help but think how people might celebrate the walls 400 years from now. Perhaps another big wave in our memory. This is the baptistry, dedicated to the memory of an extraordinary woman, Cecil Frances Alexander. Born in 1818, she died in 1895. She was the wife of Archbishop William Alexander and they resided nearby. Cecil Frances Alexander wrote many famous hymns and these stained glass windows illustrates three of her hymns once in Royal David City, there is a green hill far away and the golden gates are lifted up. Hymns that continue to be sung and enjoyed the world over. It's little wonder that Derry is still known as a city of song. I'm in the nave, the centre aisle, an excellent vantage point to survey the many features of this wonderful cathedral. And it's time now to take a look at some of the other events from the past month in the city of culture. Drama, traditional dance and music brought history to life at this year's Maiden City Festival. The annual celebration told the story of the siege on the walls and around the city. Echo Echo's Motion Ensemble was a three-week celebration of improvisation. Sixteen dancers and musicians from all over the world presented spontaneous performances around the city and at the company's new studios on Magazine Street. President of Ireland Michael D. Higgins opened a new exhibition at London Street Gallery. Culturecraft brought together new work by 40 eminent makers for August Craft Month. And the big news this month was the announcement of the return of the Clipper Round the World Yacht Race. The Clipper Homecoming Festival and the Derry London Derry Yacht brought hundreds of thousands to the city in 2012. The race will return in 2014 and 2016. We told you earlier how a silver gilt chalice and patent was sent from London in 1633 as a promise to build a church here. Not only was the promise kept, but so too were the chalice and patent, and here they are. Amazing. 400 years and still used here during special services and in public display for all to see. 
Still to come on this month's show, we've got yet another record-breaking attempt and a good taste of the fly. But first, the team that brought us Picturing Derry have done it again. Their new photographic exhibition takes a look at how conflict has scarred the physical fabric of cities like Berlin and Dubrovnik and how people have coped with their everyday lives beyond the walls. You realise it's not just something nice to look at. There's something deep and ugly. But then it's too late, you are trapped. Only the photographer, the guy on the ground, he's the guy that I trust. He's the guy with the eyes on the ground. He's not standing in a rooftop in a neighbouring country in front of a camera reporting stuff that he just pulled off the AP wires from London in a neighbouring country because he's not there. I don't trust him. I can't trust him. I trust the photographer. It's very difficult to involve people in war photography to make them accept, to take the time to look at it and understand. This exhibition is called Beyond the Walls and it's a project that really brings together photography from conflict areas. The plan was with the Nerve Centre and City of Culture uh, to work together with two other partners in Europe, one in Berlin and one in Dubrovnik, looking at three walled cities and how they had experienced conflict. And the Picturing Derry project is part of it and I suppose for us here in Derry it creates a kind of international context for that. It isn't just uh, Derry looking at itself, it's kind of seeing it in a wider context of how different populations have dealt with conflict and come through conflict. So here in this room you have um, work by Emmanuel Ortiz, his individual project is called Broken Lights of Yugoslavia and he for about 10 years covered the collapse of Yugoslavia in, in the really intense civil war that broke out there in the 1990s. When I arrived in France, I was 17 and I couldn't study, or well, I was not good at that, but I need to say things. So I grabbed a camera and that was okay for me, a way to, to express things. And is a perpetual exploration and you're yeah, all the time analyzing around you everything. Uh, there's one picture here I like especially, this, this one from Vukovar. And when I took this picture, at the very moment, very same moment, I thought, this is the way I have to shoot all this conflict. It means in a quiet, quiet pictures that make you freak out. Uh, I think it's, it's very difficult to involve people in war photography, to make them accept, to take the time to look at it and understand. And once you go to the picture, you realize it's not just something nice to look at. There's something deep and ugly, but then it's too late, you are trapped. Another part of the project is uh, Kai Weidenhofer's project, which is called Wall on Wall, which um, over a period of about seven years, he documented major international border walls or international border fences, um, ones like the Israel-Palestine, ones like USA-Mexico, or uh, the Spanish enclave in Morocco, Ceuta. And that is it's amazing because it's, it's work going on Berlin Wall at the same time as it features here in the gallery and at the same time as it featured on the Free Dairy Wall here. And then we have a final part which is the second part of Picturing Dairy that really essentially looks at the way that the city itself was kind of torn apart by the conflict. The point of the gallery is really to bring the reality of, of war and conflict to the audience directly from the guy who was there, directly from the photographer, rather than it being filtered through our medias and sanitized by our media. It's coming straight from the guy who was on the ground, who knows the story better than anybody else, straight to the public. And I found that the reactions are amazing. You know, people are amazed by this. So I try to package a story and give it, you know, an education, a story, so people can learn something for it. So when you put this all together in a, in, a, in a nice, simple, layman's package, people really learn stuff. And that's the point of what we're trying to do. Every picture is a story. Every picture is a story. Your story or how you get to that place, or how you get out. 
<laughs> how you took it, and sometimes the relationship you, you, you establish with people. You must know that 95% of your job is to be accepted. We laugh a lot doing this job, because there's always surreal situations. But if you don't laugh, stop, because you won't resist. We're not Psychologically, you will not resist. If you take it too seriously, you collapse. An interesting journey through conflict. On to more light-hearted things. River dance is a show known the world over, but the challenge is how many can dance it at once. The current record is held by over 2,000 Dubliners who took to the banks of the Luffy earlier this year. That record just had to be broken, and who better to take on the dubs than the people of Derry, London Derry? They gathered in the sunshine and danced in the rain, and are confident they have broken the Guinness Book of World Records for the greatest number of people to dance river dance in the same place at the same time in the world. Here's a look at how it all went. We're here in the gallery of the cathedral, just below the bell tower. From here you can see the interior of the building in all its ornate glory. Time now to take a look at some of the highlights of the City of Culture programme this fall. The eyes of the international art world will all be on Derry from October, as Laurie Provo, Tino Segal, David Strigley and Lynette Yadam Bochy compete for the Turner Prize in October. This year's Banks of the Foil Halloween Carnival will be bigger and better than ever. The five-day festival is said to be the biggest of its kind in Europe. Throughout November, the story of Irish Project will tell the story of the Irish language in Derry, Londonderry and the people who speak it. And Lumiere will transform familiar city landmarks, buildings, hidden spaces, parks and waterways into a magical nocturnal landscape of artworks made from light. From the surrounds of this wonderful and historic cathedral, we leave you with some of the highlights of the Fla. Until next time, bye bye. Goodbye. What have you liked about it so far? The music and all the little kids getting involved in, in all the atmosphere. It's been buzzing from start to finish. Like it's, it's getting it's getting better and getting busier. I mean, the atmosphere. Everybody's been talking about it. I mean, there was people who were a bit worried about it, but I think 
from what I've seen, there's nothing to worry about. I mean, it's very well organised, very safe, which is great to see. And the quality of the, the music, uh, which speaks for itself, is really good. Yeah. We'll be here again. <laughs> I hear you have, you're up for it in 2016, so based on this year's uh, preparations and performance, I'm sure you'll be back. cousin and my sister and we're really happy to be here on holidays and to be at the Pla. Thank you. 